All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR here. So the PlayStation 5 Future of Gaming uh, event went down today. I live streamed my reaction to it. So anybody who wants to can go check out that video. I took some time, uh, gathered my thoughts, and now I'm just going to summarize uh, my feelings about the, the content that was shown and just review the whole show, right? So let's just get right into it, and I'm just going to pretty much touch on everything that was uh, mentioned in the show, everything that was announced, everything that was revealed. I'm not going to spend too much time on everything because obviously there were several things that I personally didn't care about. So, um, the PlayStation 5 event. So, first of all, let me just say that this is, this is the format that I think all of these shows should be. It should be minimal talking and just gameplay, back-to-back -back gameplay. We did uh, get a little bit of talking, but it was short. I think the, the longest any developer talked was maybe like a minute, probably not even that long, and that's how it should be. When you have games... You don't have to talk. That's a fact. When you have games, you don't, there is no need, there's no reason to speak. You can, you know, you could give us a little background information, a little additional information, you know, have somebody introduce the game from the studio who's making it cool. That's all good and dandy. But once you do that, get out the way. We don't need you no more. We can let the gameplay speak to us, right? So I'm glad they, they, did it in that format and that's something that sony has done uh several times before at the at events but when they don't when they haven't done it is it's times when they haven't had that much content to show so the fact that they did this you know they knew they had plenty of content to show so i, I just wanted to point out that i love that format so i'm not going to go in chronological order in which they showed these games um but i, I think i have most of them in order uh, the, the 4K videos was available after the show. Uh, as we know, the live stream was in 1080p, 30 frames per second. So, you know, you should do, definitely do yourself a service and watch the, uh, uh, watch the 4K version of these videos because there's so much, con so much detail you cannot see and so much detail you miss uh, watching something live streamed in 1080p, 30. 1080p, 30 native, you know, is pretty low. And then 1080p, 30 uh, live streamed is even lower because it's compressed and the video is degraded and all that stuff. So definitely watch the 4K version. So first thing, they uh, they announced Grand Theft Auto 5 is coming to PlayStation 5 and people who uh, have PlayStation Plus will get it free. Uh, that's a launch game. Rockstar is milking this GTA cow. Like, and I can't be mad at them for it. I can't blame them for it. Listen. GTA 5 has sold over 100 million copies, 100 million. It's the, one of the, I think the most, the, the best selling game of all time, or it's made the most money of all time. This game has made mo more money than some of the top, you know, grossing movies ever. So you already know. And then, and it's, this is the third generation it's going to be in. It's this third consecutive generation. But I think this is a very smart move by Sony getting this locked in for PlayStation Plus at launch because people are still going to buy it. Like if if for some reason, by the way, let me just let me just say that. See how anybody could not like this show. Looking at this show, there are at least one or two games that every gamer should see that convinces you to buy a PlayStation 5 for me. There's at least five, like at least five, probably more that I was shown that I would buy a PlayStation 5 for. Um, but some of these games are multi -plastic. but exclusive wives. Yeah, there's definitely three or four, probably more than that. Um, so, yeah, th there was something for everyone. So I don't know how anybody could deny this show, but there are definitely people that, oh, I can play GTA 5 for free. I mean, free. I still got to play for PlayStation Plus. I could play GTA 5 day one on PlayStation 5. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll get a PlayStation 5 just for that. Believe it or not, yes, there are people who will do that. I mean, there's people who've bought GTA 5 on PS3, PS4, PC. And guess what? They're probably, they're going to get it again on, on PlayStation 5. So I think this was a very smart move by Sony. Next, uh, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. So think this was going to be there in my prediction video i said we're not going to see spider-man 
But the reason I thought that is because I thought it would take more time. Now, they have spoken about like the technology and the PlayStation 5 games being faster to develop, but I don't think that has, I don't think that's the reason. This seems to be like almost like a standalone extension of uh, Spider-Man PS4. It doesn't seem to be, it's, it's a full-fledged game on its own about Miles Morales. It seems to be like a stand, like, like what Lost Legacy was to Uncharted 4, right? Which is not a bad thing. It doesn't, it, it might not have the uh the same amount of content it may not be the same length as spider-man on the ps4 spider-man ps4 was uh, what was it around 15 to 20 hours maybe this will be a little bit shorter than that maybe 12 i don't know that remains to be seen we still got to get more information from insomniac with the content of this game either way it looks visually better than um spider-man on the ps4 this is a 2020 game it's launching this year it's coming out this year so that's great you know people can look forward to that at, at, at launch plenty of people will buy a playstation 5 for that it doesn't seem to be coming to playstation 4 so you will need a playstation 5 for it so yeah that game looks great uh i'm a fan of miles morales most people have become fan fan of My miles morales what's great about it is miles has very different powers than um uh peter parker you know, like the the the, the invisibility, the, the his uh his um electric sting. It's a different name. I'm forgetting the name. So his powers are are very different from like Peter Peter Parker. So that will change up the gameplay and everything like that. So that that game looks looks really good. That looks like it's gonna be be very fun. Getting to play as Mal Morales, ex expanding his story. And, and you just just his transition from when he was created to having his own video game usually the process is much longer for for newer characters to even show up on the even show up on the big screen whether it's uh live action or animated and then get a video game like his transition has been very fast and people love him as as a character so yeah then so yeah spider-man that that was great um so there sony's killing it out the gate uh then they showed, um, I'm not sure exactly what they showed after this, uh, but I, I grant there was Gran Turismo. So Gran Turismo seven, I'm not a, I'm not a, a fan of racing games. Um, so I can tell you, uh, whether this game looked good. I don't give a damn about racing simulators. You'd have to ask a, a racing game enthusiast, uh, who likes Gran Turismo. But from what I saw, it looks, you know, it, it's Gran Turismo. It sells millions every single time now i i know about the scrutiny and and the and the critiques that a lot of people have had for the recent uh gran turismo games whether it be the sound design the content and everything like that uh and and not matching up against uh forza forza seems to have surpassed it but uh i mean it seems to be a a, a decent um game from my eye test at least you know like i said I, I don't really know much about it but the fact that they're showing so much first party stuff like right out the gate is is just is just very impressive i definitely did not see that coming so yeah so spider-man it was gran turismo um ratchet and clank uh i expected ratchet and clank um but i i didn't expect both because these are both coming from insomniac games obviously we i expected ratchet and clank not spider-man and ratchet and clank was one of those games that was really showcasing what the playstation 5 and the ssd can do uh there was ray tracing it in there like i said look at the 4k video um but literally entire levels were loading in an instant that's probably when developers say this is oh this this game isn't possible without the SSD or isn't possible without this new without this new uh, console. I usually don't believe them. I believe it in this scenario. It's literally loading entire levels because the concept of the game is like there are rifts and you go through the rifts and then it brings you to an entire new level. Yeah, that's probably something that the, that is only possible because of the SSD, and that's just a that's just a really good gameplay concept. Um, you know, thinking outside of the box and everything like that. Uh, I haven't, I haven't been a long time Ratchet and Clank fan. I was only a fan of the remake. I didn't like the ones uh, prior to that. So I, I like the remake. And I thought at first, like this was a crack in time because he he was going through different portals. I'm like, oh, is this a crack in time? But I was like, crack in time that didn't come right after 
the um the original game so this is the sequel to the original game and it's going in a different direction than what the 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 sequel to the original game all the way back then was if you get what i'm saying so yeah ratchet and clank look good and and none of these games had like a i would say a huge uh leap in 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 visual fidelity they looked better but it's not a huge leap right and i didn't expect that most people shouldn't expect that what what you should expect is higher frame rates higher resolutions uh better effects you know ray tracing particle effects um things that make the image uh presentation look cleaner and crispier so you're not gonna like i said you you shouldn't expect like a huge leap in visuals so yeah uh ratchet and clank look, looked really good um skipping ahead a little bit to a different game um resident evil 8 village so resident evil 8 village looks good i wasn't uh the biggest fan of 7 7 was good 7 recaptured the horror aspect of resident evil uh, but I'm not I'm not a biggest fan of where the where the story is going. I think the story is just kind of strange, you know, and, and it doesn't include some of the former characters besides Chris. And Chris looks different in every single image they showed and every single game they show. Chris looks different. So it's whatever. And you play as Ethan. And it's like, I really don't ha I don't think anybody really cares about Ethan, this character you play as or we haven't really given any reason to have a connection or care about ethan but the but the you know the the ambiance the atmosphere they've really the creepiness the horror aspect they've recaptured that i hope they do expand upon the gameplay a little bit more also i wasn't the biggest fan of the gameplay in seven um but the story and you know the horror aspect they 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 definitely made a return to that so uh yeah resident evil 8 village Moving on from that, uh, Horizon, uh, Horizon Zero, well, not Horizon Zero Dawn 2, Horizon uh, 2, uh, Forbidden West. So if you don't know, I loved Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, I, I said it was the best new IP of this generation, and I stand by that. Um, so I was definitely looking forward to this sequel. I can't wait till the original comes out on PC so I can play it again. And this looks good. This didn't, they didn't show much gameplay. Uh, it, it, it was in game, um, what we were seeing, but it wasn't, wasn't actual much direct gameplay. So I wanted to see a little bit more of that. Um, but it seemed like we'll have to wait. Um, Horizon had a really good story. They're going to con continue, uh, that we saw some new concept of, of new machines and every, and everything like that. So yeah, Horizon looks, I, I can't wait for that game. Um, most of these games we didn't get like uh so we didn't we didn't get any solid release dates but we did get like uh like a year or at least we knew uh what year a lot of these games were um uh were, were coming out whether it's 2020 uh 2021 or 20 i think there was even a few games that was like 2022 so uh yeah we're still gonna have to be waiting a while uh let me move on from the that game um let me see what else we got uh, i think that was oh demon souls i might as well just you know go through all the uh playstation um first party or playstation exclusive games demon souls remake made by blue point games this is what we expected blue point was going to be making um this was long rumored and you know logic told us it was definitely going to be demon souls and when um shuhei yoshida said it was a game very close to his heart and and we know he he loves like souls games and everything like that so it made the most sense this is a collaboration between blue point and, and japan studios of course and yeah it's looking good there were there were there was a little bit of gameplay we there was some direct screenshots released after for a lot of these games also uh there was a little bit of gameplay in there um, not too, not too much though. Uh, it was like snippets here and there and, you know, but yeah, Demon Souls, uh, excited for that. Y'all know I love Souls games. Um, so, uh, I don't think this one got a, uh, that, I'm not sure that that would be a good, a good launch game. I think, I think they should make Spider-Man Miles Morales and Demon Souls launch game because Demon Souls was a PS3 launch game. So you should just make Demon Souls remake a PS5 launch game. I think it'll uh i think you know that that l makes sense so yeah demon souls is looking good i'm excited for that um what else do we got uh hit there was jumping around more hitman 3 i i've i haven't been excited for the uh hitman games um b 
because I don't feel like Hitman has evolved very well. Uh, I, I feel like, I, just, I don't know, I just feel like it's kind, of, it's kind of been the same game for a, for a long time, and I don't feel like it's evolved very much. I think it kind of just stays the same. It's, it's very stagnant, and um, it's very, you know, very same-ish, every, every entry of it. But this is Hitman 3. Maybe something about it will change. Maybe something about it will be new. But yeah, it's it's for a stealth game. And I like stealth games, but it, it doesn't excite me. It, it just doesn't excite me. It just feels very uh, like the series is very complacent and stagnant and stuck in one place. So yeah, it's not something that I'm personally uh, ex excited for. Um, moving on from that, so many games shown. Um, we had Astro Playroom. By the way, Astro Playroom, uh, that comes with the PlayStation 5, I believe they said. They want um, a, a game to come with the PlayStation to kind of show off the features of the DualSense controller. So uh, Astro Playroom is going to come with the, uh, the the PlayStation 5. That's a, that's a launch title. Um, they showed a little bit of, I don't know if I could say show. Uh, but there was 2K20, a 2K21 trailer, and you know they tried to pull the same trick that every uh, sports game does at the beginning of every generation. They um, put a put a put a a, a player um, and sweat dripping a player model and there's sweat dripping down his face, and that always fools people into thinking, oh, the game is the game looks so uh, you know hyper realistic. You can see the sweat dripping down their face. Typical tricks, yeah. Not much to say about that. Uh, oh, Sackboy, uh, a big adventure. So Sackboy is is um, this this it's not Little Big Plan necessarily. Uh, it's it's Sackboy, a big adventure. Um, this is made by oh damn, I'm forgetting the name. It's not made by Media Molecule. Uh, um, Little Big Planet Three wasn't made by Media Molecule either. It's slipping my mind who who makes this. It's like I I see their name, but I can't remember exactly. Um. But yeah, this one seems like a platformer when Little Big Planet typically was like it was a platformer, but it was also uh, like a user creation type of game. And I wasn't a, I've never been a fan of Little, Little Big Planet, but there's there are games like Sackboy, a big adventure, which if it's just a platformer, that's something I would try out like uh, as a uh, as like if at a discount. I wouldn't mind trying it out. You know, sometimes platformers can be like de uh, decent palate cleansers. So I don't mind trying that out for like a discounted price or something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm glad they seem to be getting rid of the of the uh, of the whole user created world, you know, creating levels. Some people like that stuff. I'm not a fan of it. So, yeah, um, Sackboy, big adventure. Um, Godfall. Godfall is being made by Gearbox. Uh, that's a uh, like a I think it's a PlayStation exclusive Um being made by being made by Gearbox, some people are not that impressed by Godfall. I think this showing of the game um, looked better than the previous showings. Some people feel like it's the opposite way. Some people thought it looked better, like when we first uh, seen it leak uh, before. But no, I, I think I think the combat looked okay. I think the visuals look look good. I think it looked the visuals look better, and I think the combat looks looks uh, actually pretty decent. So I think Godfall looks okay. We got to see a little bit more. Um, but it might be a a decent uh, launch window game. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, Death Loop. Death Loop was a game made by Arcane Studios, same people who made Dishonored. It and it kind of looked like Dishonored a, a little bit. Um, you could see certain things. They definitely took it from Dishonored. Uh, it's a it's a it's a game with a time loop. Um, a, a time loop concept. Uh, there's several games like that, and uh, you know, it looked decent. It had some decent gameplay. It had, it seemed to have even some of the same powers from Dishonored. So it, it looked cool. It looked, it looked decent. I liked the the gameplay. looked okay. The concept looked okay. Um, and it had like two black, uh, you know, characters. Now, that's always a plus in my book. So yeah, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. Uh, let me actually see. I, I, there was two games that I was kind of confusing. Um, let me make sure I don't confuse them because there was two. There was one game. I think this is the Kenna Bridge of Spirits was the game where the girl was like in the forest and everything like that. Yeah, it was like an adventure 
an action adventure type game um platforming type game and it looked it looked like a decent a adventure game um it looked you know the visuals and the the art style uh what was okay uh, again this is another game i probably wouldn't buy at launch but you know at a discounted price uh, i would definitely try it out so this game looked good it looked decent this was a decent looking game um what else do we got ghostwire tokyo ps5 yeah that wasn't doing it for me that looked the game looked very weird and strange um very like this paranormal type game it didn't look good to me like i i like this looks weird i'm not into it i'm, I'm pass on that not for me um uh, i mentioned ratchet flank uh what the hell is in my background making so much damn noise hold on y'all the hell is all that all right so my bad y'all all right so where were we okay so i think i've uh went through most and mentioned most of these games uh goodbye volcano high this so this 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 con this uh event had a very weird in between where they were showing like a lot of uh indie games it was weird indie territory now i don't knock indie games but like sometimes they get into this weird indie territory of games that like are very obscure and would only attract a certain type of uh fan base i guess um it was i don't even know how to describe the game it's very weird i, I was joking and i was saying oh persona persona fans would love this game y'all love being in high school and stuff like that so yeah there was like this goodbye volcano game that i thought like persona fans would be into what else do we have there was uh project athea which was another like adventure type game the the game looked like pretty big in scope and in size um it looked it looked pretty good you know they showed gameplay very shortly uh it was it's like a it was like a what 40 second trailer um and they showed like gameplay for like 10 seconds it looked decent a lot of this stuff we got to see more of though a lot of the stuff we got to see more of uh returnal returnal was made by house mark um this is it, it seemed to be like a uh very much a house mark mark game but in third person the combat even seemed like if you take one of house mark games but if, if you put it in third person that's pretty much what it would be and i like i like how it looked it looked the combat looked pretty interesting it gave me very much like a, a dead space vibe with the with the concept and everything like that so uh it, I'm looking forward to that. I like the sci-fi aspect of it. I like the uh, the combat. Um, they've definitely taken everything uh, as far as shooting mechanics go uh, that they put in their previous arcade-like titles, and they're pretty much bringing it to a third-person shooter. So Returnal, Returnal to me looked good. They had this weird indie game called Bug Snacks. Yeah, there's nothing for me to say about that. Um, Le Little Devil Inside uh i actually don't remember what that looked like let me take a look at that yeah little devil inside no no that wasn't for me i was like yeah we're still in weird indie territory that game didn't look interesting to me there was uh solar ash this was another game in the indie territory yeah it wasn't doing nothing for me it's it's just not for me and I, and, and I don't knock indie games i don't knock indie games there's certain indie games i get excited for but these weren't it for me there was a game called stray apparently you play as a stray cat yeah nah i'm good i'm, I'm that's that's a no for me um odd world soul, soul storm i've never been into into any of the odd world games so yeah this didn't do anything to change my mind it looked more along the line of other odd world games um pragmata pragmata was some bizarre game from capcom i i thought it might have been i thought it even might have been uh whatchamacallit uh uh dlc um death stranding dlc it was about some dude in some space suit and he was he was taking some girl and took her to outer space whatever and i don't know it's weird um but nothing that they showed excite me i don't even think that was even actual gameplay so yeah not nothing about that excited me uh, uh jet the far shore yeah that was another uh they li literally filled this game uh filled this thing in the middle with a whole bunch of very strange indie games um yeah this one this one looked 
lame to me too. It looked just uninteresting to me. And I think that's all the all the games they showed. Like I said, first party. So first party wise, PlayStation did their thing. They showed up first party, right? And that's really what I judge uh, events off of. That's really what I care about the most when it comes to events. It's your first party, right? Because third party is going to be everywhere. That's th those games belong to the streets. They're going to be on Xbox One. Um, they're going to they're going to be on PC. Well, Xbox Series X are going to be on PC. So I, I still account for the third party you show, because if you're going to decide to show it, I'm going to rate you on it. But th first party exclusives, definitely, or first party games, at least, even if it's not exclusive, because, you know, I'm trying to throw Xbox a bone. Uh, first party games at least hold more weight in my book when it comes to these showings. So and I think they did a really good job. We so we didn't get a price. We didn't get a release date for the PlayStation 5. Uh, no price, no release date. Um, we didn't. I wanted like an exclusive multiplayer. I was hoping for like Killzone, uh, a Killzone 5 multiplayer only game. Um, I mean, there are some. Th uh, third party multiplayer game options uh, available but i was hoping like for something exclusive didn't get that um now let's talk about the, the the console so last thing is they revealed the console uh they showed they showed off the dual sense 5 controller uh features which you, which we've already known about um and then they showed off the console the console is this like sleek type of uh tower uh, it has an interesting curvature to it. It seems pretty slim, but it is uh, pretty tall. Um, at first, it didn't look like you can lay it flat, but apparently you can. I, I've seen it uh, in an image laying flat, but it needs like a, a, it's a, there's a dock for it to stand up straight. And then there's like a dock for it to lay flat, apparently. But uh, it's, it's white and black, just like the, uh, just like the controller. Um, and people have already been making like memes of it and everything like that, kind of how it looks. It, uh, uh, people were saying like, there's this one thing where it literally looks like Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh, where Kaiba has like the black vest and the and the white um, and the white overcoat over it. It literally looks like Kaiba's outfit. That's hilarious. Um, I I still want it want the want the console in black. I want the controller in black. I hope they do have that at launch. Um, I just prefer everything in my setup, uh, to be black. So I have to wait and see if they actually do give us that. Um, so yeah, it has this nice, nice, sleek, um, slim design, at least a, it, it looks sleek, uh, at least. And there's going to be two versions of the console. So it's going to be a discless, uh, di digital, uh, console PS5. And then just the regular one with a with, with the Blu-ray. Um, so if I had to guess, I would think the regular PlayStation Five is going to be four ninety nine, and the digital version is going to be three ninety nine. Because if you take out an entire Blu-ray, I, I I assume the difference between that would be like a hundred dollars. I I would guess, you know. Um, so my thing is, I would probably get a regular a regular PS5 because the only way I would get a digital an all digital PlayStation 5 is if Sony drastically improves their their refund policy because right now it's kind of trash uh it's really hard getting getting a refund from them and or they uh implement digital um digital trade-ins because I don't want to I don't want to buy digital games certain digital games and then if I want to like do something with it i can't because i bought it digitally i don't want to be stuck with it you know sometimes you buy games dig digitally that you don't even you know it doesn't end up being worth it you don't even end up liking the game now most of the time you know i i'm, I'm right about the games that i think i'm gonna like most of the time 95 percent of the time but sometimes you you get duds like i didn't end up i didn't end up liking days gone and now i'm stuck with it because i bought it digitally so you know that's the only way i would get a digital console as if like they implement those two things so yeah i've been talking like half an hour so to wrap this up to summarize it i thought this was a good event i thought it was a good event historically playstation doesn't have the best launches uh and if the collection of what they shown um is indicative of what their launch is at least gonna look like launch day or launch window 
then I think it's very promising. I think it's looking uh, very good. Like I said, even though we didn't get any actual uh, most actual release dates, uh, if they, like I said, if this is indicative of what it's going to look like around launch, then the, yeah, that's very impressive. Um, cause like I said, usually PlayStation starts out extremely slow, uh, and then they pick up a lot of steam, like in year three and four. Um, I would, if I had to give this, uh, this event, like, uh, a, a rating out of 10, I would give it like a 7.5. I would only give it a 7, I would give it a 7.5 or eight. Right. And I would, I would only give it that, um, because it could be higher, but there was a lot of fluff and indie stuff in between. And it's not the fact that it was indie. It was just weird, uninteresting, obscure indie titles that I didn't care about that didn't look good to me. So that's the only thing that lowered the score. Like they could have made this a little bit more. And the thing is like, it, it was only like an hour and 15 minutes, I think, but it seemed longer only because of those weird indie games in the middle that kind of dragged a little bit. That, that that really made it seem like it dragged out a little bit. So, yeah, I think I covered everything. I've been talking freaking forever. I'm tired of talking. Um, but yeah, this PlayStation 5 event, this was good. This was good to great. So, listen, man. I appreciate y'all. I thank y'all for watching these videos. Uh, I've been putting in a lot of work, a lot of time into these videos. So, uh, should I say a lot of work, a lot of time? Well, a lot of time because of this. the only the only time I put into these videos is the time it takes to record. I'm gonna be real with you, but you know, my, I feel like time is valuable. So I appreciate y'all. Please hit the like button. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload or live stream. You know, I've been doing a lot of playthroughs out here. Um, uh, hit the hit the join button below the video to become a member. Uh, you get them custom emotes. And uh, you you get them chat badges, and uh, yeah, check out Weapon Wheel this Sunday. Weapon Wheel this Sunday is gonna be lit. We gonna be talking about all all of this stuff that happened. Um, it's very been a very eventful uh, week, so yeah, check out Weapon Wheel this Sunday, and uh, yeah, I'll catch y'all in the next video. All right, I'm out of here. Peace.